Welcome back to another click training video. This time we have moved on to the sub intermediate aim training from aimer 7. So here is what the routine looks like and we'll move right into bounce 180. All right, so here's my bounce 180 run. It went pretty well, I'd say, for the first time doing this kind of uh, click timing and target switching practice course. Um, I actually have a pretty decent score for a sub intermediate click trainer, which is the current routine that I'm on with Aimer 7. And I will get into a little bit why I decided to switch to that after only two weeks of doing advanced beginner. But yeah, so the score I got here is right around 62, which I did look ahead to the advanced, or I think it was intermediate uh, click training and to get up from intermediate to advanced, there's some scores set that you have to hit. And one of the scores is getting a 70 or higher on bounce 180. And so after just one week, I got up to 62. So uh, I still have a long time before that's going to be something I worry about, but just something to measure against. All right, so here's the graph. Nothing too crazy. Um, pretty typical, I'd say, for a first time doing a hard scenario like this where I start off pretty terrible and slowly my averages just go up and up and up until my averages are pretty close to my peak. So I actually have some fun, I guess, news for one wall, six targets small. Uh, similarly with Bounce 180, I looked ahead to see what kind of scores I'm looking for when I'm going from intermediate to advanced. And one of the scores that you need is a 1100 or higher on one wall, six targets small. My current best is around 910, and so as that's a lot to improve on, I've decided to add some complimentary aim training things to just supplement with. It's not going to be instead of my routine, but if I want to do a little bit of extra work in some day, I have some extra routine. So I'll pop this up on the screen right now, just so you can see what I'm going to be trying out. and. Maybe next week or the week after, we'll see if I had positive results. In the meantime, I'm just gonna continue doing one wall, six targets during my normal routine and trying to go smooth from dot to dot, work on path planning and all that good stuff. On the chart for one wall, six targets small this week, you'll notice that the averages are way higher than they've been in the previous weeks. That's because I actually tried to go for higher scores every single run instead of in previous weeks where I Spent the first five runs going super slow and trying to draw super straight uh, smooth lines between the dots. Moving over to Passu, this is another one where it is on the list of scores to achieve to go from intermediate to advanced, and the score is an 80. And so far I've gotten, I believe, a 92. So I'm absolutely crushing that. And I think going from advanced to the next tier is like a 90 so i already have that one as well so that not too much to improve on for pasu here i'm gonna keep playing it because it's in the routines and honestly it's kind of fun at this point it's a lot more relaxing knowing that i have something that i can play that i don't have to improve on immediately and i can spend more time focusing on the other tracks also i haven't mentioned it yet but you can notice now or if you haven't noticed yet i completely changed the ui of my Kovacs to this more like dark theme with these glowing orange balls. Um, I dig orange glowing bodies with blue glowing heads, but none of the courses I have right now are, uh, none of the things that you're shooting in the challenges I'm doing right now have heads. So you won't see that, but um, I don't know. I think it looks nicer in general. It's more fun to watch specifically, uh, especially for like a video, but I don't know that it actually adds any value in the game itself. Like, I don't feel like all my scores are getting better because of it. So my averages for Passu are actually really good. Um, like I said before, 
the 80 is what's required to go from intermediate to advanced and my average score on the last day was almost an 80 so absolutely crushing passu so related to crushing passu and static clicking and all that stuff i want to show you a clip of how my training's been going in game So as you can see, I still s Moving on to Rex Strafe Kata, here we go with our first tracking one of this video. Went really well this time, I've been feeling pretty good with the mid short range tracking. I've been working on editing some clips of some tracking from Apex because I think that would be a good indicator of how tracking is looking in game. I think it's a lot easier to see the results from the tracking in game in relation to Kovacs than it is to see like clicking and flicks, especially since I've been mostly playing Apex. Um, the only real thing I feel better on recently with Apex is the wingman for clicking. It's kind of like a little game of passu and I've been noticing a lot more headshotting happening even when I'm not like consciously trying to think about hitting headshots, it's just ingrained in my blood. Yeah, but overall, it's been feeling really good recently in games. I definitely feel like I have the edge just because of the amount of training I've been putting in. And looking at this graph, this is another really promising graph. I'm happy to see this week that like all the graphs are pretty much trending upwards where a lot of other weeks it's like I have a lot of best scores on the first days and then just my mental ruins the rest of it. So here's another one of those new ones. It's a rendition of the one I did last time that was just a tile frenzy 180 strafing, but this one's 200%. So you got faster tiles zipping around everywhere. This one is the absolute shoulder destroyer, especially if you're on a low sensitivity. I've actually really been feeling it in my shoulders. Um, one thing I've been doing in general that I've been playing around with this week is raw excel which if you haven't heard of that it's pretty awesome you should check it out uh pretty much just lets you have a super low sensitivity and set your own acceleration graph and then that way when you do something like a fast flick or a 180 or you're just moving around it's super easy but then when you snap onto a target it slows down because you're not moving your mouse as fast anymore and lets you have that good like slow easy uh clicking and that's what I've been using in this course because when I just do it on low sense, it absolutely destroys my shoulder. Not too much to say here, pretty normal looking graph, still trending upward, not too much to complain about. So, close fast strafes, I believe this is a new one, yes, this is a new one for these type of videos for me. Um, this one I don't have too, too hard of a time with. I have done the invincible, invincible version of this in the past when I've done some tracking aiming. And so this is the same thing. It's just the bots die and then you have to flick to where the next one is. Um, I did in the next week, what you'll see in next week's video, identify another weak point of mine along with the one wall, six targets small is very close fast strafes and so i have been doing some investigating and in what i can do better in that i'm not too worried about it right now because i don't have any scores that i specifically need to get up for going from intermediate to advanced but it is something that i have been doing a little bit of research on so that when that does happen i am prepared nothing too crazy for this graph either it's sitting around the seven to eight thousands which is pretty average i say my most popular score is like 7200 sometimes 8000 so that's the graph last but not least we have everyone's favorite ground plaza easy if you haven't yet pause never mind you don't need to pause the video because this run's going to go on for like four minutes but go get some popcorn come back we'll still be here waiting for you watching this run of ground plaza easy but in actual, uh, I did do a little bit of research on some things I could do to improve in Ground Plaza Easy. Uh, I think similar to what I discovered with my close fast race being bad, like you can see right now, is that my close fast strafes are bad. And I think that's one of the biggest things holding me back right now in Ground Plaza Easy. In addition to this, I have Ground Plaza Easy for a lot of weeks to come, and so I've decided in the next week to increase going from one run 
every day to doing two runs every day. So I don't know, that might help as well. It is torture some, I've already done it two days, but I think it's good to add a little bit of extra practice into the stuff that I'm the worst at because it's all gonna pay off in the long run. So since there's not too much left to talk about with Ground Plaza Easy, I decided I would show you some of the scores I was talking about earlier that I need to reach. If you see in the top right, these are the scores to go from intermediate to advanced. I'm still on sub-intermediate, but it's nice to know what kind of stuff I need to start working on now so that when I get to that point, I'm doing all the better. So if you look up there, I have my current scores and the things that are on there that I've already done. I haven't done the pressure aiming one and I haven't done close fast trace invincible recently. So my current scores that I need to work on a lot is getting my one wall six targets small from 913 up to 1100 or higher, getting one wall six targets DE from 154 to 165 or higher. My passu, like I said earlier, is already over by 12, so I'm good on that one. And then Bounce 180 is currently at 62, and I need to get 70 or higher, so that one shouldn't be too hard. And that's pretty much all I have to talk about. Next time I might read a bedtime story or something. I don't know. These runs take forever.